Welcome back everybody. This is our video solution to problem 3 from quiz 12, fall 2023, math 307, linear algebra at Cal State Fullerton. In this problem, we're first uh, reminded that if we have square matrices A and B, then the trace of the product doesn't depend on the order in which we take that product. All right, now we're asked to prove that if we have a linear operator T on a finite dimensional vector space, then the trace of the matrix of T with respect to a basis doesn't depend on the choice of basis. All right, this is something we alluded to in the previous video. All right, well, let's see how we do this. Uh, first thing, it's probably good to remind ourselves that if I have uh, beta as some basis of a vector space, let's say V, right? That's T is going to be some linear operator on V. Um, then the matrix of T with respect to B, right? Remember, this is Okay, I'll just use some ad hoc notation here. We'll call those vectors beta 1 through beta n. Okay, and the entries, right, in this matrix, um, uh, they, they tell you, right, how to write the image of T, right, of, say, beta i in terms of uh, the beta. So, for example, T of beta i is just going to be, well, okay, so if I had uh, some letters in here, right, it could be like 1 i, a, 2i, so forth, a, n, i. So I'd have a, and then there's going to be um, some counting variable, say k, and I'll put the i up here on the top, and then I could have, uh, actually I'll leave it on the bottom, that's fine, a, k, i, beta, uh, k. Okay, and so this tells me, right, a, k, i is just the coefficient, of beta k when I apply t to beta i. All right, so there we go. Uh, now, this notation can end up being a little bit cumbersome. And so oftentimes uh, people use a, a different type of notation. So they'll use square brackets around the t to indicate they're gonna make a matrix. And then they're gonna put the basis of the domain on the bottom and the basis of the codomain on the top. Right? And now, we showed when we defined matrix multiplication uh, a much more general sort of statement. If I had a matrix of T with respect to beta and, say, gamma, and I multiplied that by a matrix of some other operator S uh, with respect to, I don't know, how about we'll say alpha and beta. Okay, so we, we make sure that the, um, the bases line up, right, where this basis here matches that basis there. So when we define matrix multiplication, we did it so that this product would be the matrix of the operator TS with respect to alpha and gamma. Okay, so this is a known thing. If we write this in this abbreviated notation, it turns into M, not going to M, T, beta gamma times S alpha beta, and that equals TS alpha gamma. And you notice you have this nice cancellation law going on here, right? The upper and the lower bases you know, cancel, and you're left with the alpha and the gamma. All right, so that's the notation of this. Now, how do we change the basis, right, in terms of matrices? Uh, so there's a really nice way to do it if we utilize all this notation we've come up with. So let's say I want to write T in terms of, say, gamma, okay? And I have it in terms of beta. That was given to me, right? So gamma is another basis of V. Well, here's what I can do. Um, I can start with my T beta beta, and I can take the identity matrix, or at least the identity operator, rather, and I write the matrix in terms of gamma and beta. And you can see that if I do this using this multiplication property on the right, I'm going to get, well, the product of T and I, which is just T. But now it's going to go, right, these betas up and down will cancel, and I'll just get gamma to beta. Okay? And this gives me at least now T starting with a gamma instead of a beta. But I want it to end with a gamma too. So what I do is on the left-hand side, I'm going to go from beta to gamma. 
And once again, I use the identity operator because that way it doesn't change anything. And so now the product here will be the identity operator from beta to gamma times the matrix of T from gamma to beta. And again here, these betas cancel and I'm left with the matrix of T because again, it's I times T, which is just T, but now it's going from gamma to gamma. So, so this is how we're, we're able to do it. Okay, uh, so how does that uh, play with this trace? Well, let's go back up. Remember, the trace of a product doesn't care about the order of that product. So if I try to take the trace of the matrix of T from with respect to gamma and gamma, this is again equal to the trace of, okay, I'm gonna write these three things down, but then we'll add in some clever parentheses. So I have the trace of I beta gamma, T beta beta, I gamma beta. And now here come the clever parentheses. Okay, so I'll put those there. And by our rule up above, the trace of the first matrix times the second, which is actually itself a product of matrices, is the same as the trace of the second matrix, right? Which is again is a product times the first. So this is the trace of, okay, let's put that in here now. Uh, I have the matrix of T beta beta and the matrix of I gamma beta. All right, and then I have the matrix of I beta gamma. Okay, but of course, matrix multiplication is associative, so I can drop these parentheses now. Or I can put them back. You can't stop me. And so what's happening in this uh, bit here in the purple parentheses, I'm multiplying two identity operators together which is just going to be the identity operator, and the gamma gammas are going to cancel. So this piece inside here is just going to equal the identity operator beta beta. But now I'm taking the trace of, let's see, T beta beta times I beta beta. Okay, but again, I can use our formula from up above to combine this. And what do I get? Well, T I is just T. And there, everything's going from beta to beta, so this is just the trace of T beta beta. And so if we look at the beginning and the end, I have the trace of T gamma gamma is the same as the trace of T beta beta. So changing the basis doesn't change the trace. And there's our proof. All right, it's a little bit uh, tricky, but once you get this notation down, it's not too bad at all. All right, everybody, we'll see you next time.